everybody and welcome to this interview. My guest today is somebody who likes to write, save money, and is also documenting their journey to success via their YouTube channel. Sounds like my soulmate. Please give a virtual warm welcome to Dial a Warren Shay. Welcome, my friend. Thank you so much for being here. Great to have you here. And I must say, you've got the best background of anybody who I've ever interviewed. That is amazing. Yeah, thank you. I just enjoy staring at my wallpapers all day on my TV because it just looks I, amazing. I, I, I can't blame you. I just want to stare at that now. Forget the interview. <laughs> this. <laughs> That's what yeah. we're doing now. So it's great to have you here. We've got a great show. So I'm just going to uh, go through what we're going to cover today. So today we're going to be finding out why you went from buying like things like Yeezys to then going to, to buying thrift shop clothes. That was a big <laughs> shift. Find that out. What the 24 hour rule is when it comes to purchases. And also, we discuss why people hate living within their means. But before all of that, Dio, please uh, let us know a bit about yourself. All right. So, my name is Dio. I work as a software developer, but sometimes I call myself a software engineer because it sounds a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy doing fitness activities, especially running. Um, also like being curious in the tech field as well as in personal finance and also like to be reading up on mindfulness which some people might just call mental health that's great so let's say uh, delve a bit deeper here so do you mm -hmm. have a big dream and ambition and if so what is it uh so in terms of dreams this might be uh, a little too big but um oh, i had sort of like a, <laughs> I had a sort of like a revelation younger when i was a kid and I discovered that I wanted, um, regardless of the country's infrastructure, that everyone should have access to the Internet, um, because I do think the Internet is a very interesting place and it kind of equals the playing field for everyone's voices to be heard. And actually, to this day, there's still about half of the world's population that isn't connected to the Internet. So um, I really want to, before I leave this planet, in some sense, I want to have everyone have access to the internet regardless of their living conditions that's a very impressive dream to have that's probably the the most meaningful world impacting dream i've heard on this channel and probably yeah. generally that's that's a really <laughs> amazing goal and well in theory if you carry on with your sort of entrepreneurial pursuits you're going to uh, you might be able to make that a reality you never know yeah so I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, the infamous man, Elon Musk. Oh, yes, yes. Um, so actually, his company, SpaceX, has a project called Starlink. And that's essentially um, what he's trying to do, have a global Internet structure. And even if I can't create it myself, I hope hopefully one day I'll be able to work for him and have him kind of live out my dream that I want. Right. So either way, so you'll either be able to do it yourself or work for somebody who is doing that and be part of that vision. Right. Yeah. Well, that that is very impressive. And as you said, the Internet, you know, it's, it changes countries as well. Like right? once they get access and it, it really can change a lot throughout the world, the access mm -hmm. to information and yeah. it will make the world a better place, I'd say. So that, that's really an amazing dream. And, yeah, and I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's too big. Obviously, it is big. But, yeah. you know, if, pushing it these things are possible that makes uh that makes for some very uh exciting dreaming <laughs> yeah that's for sure. well no i commend you i like big thinkers so uh don't get discouraged <laughs> okay i'll take that on my well that's the thing so if that's your dream you must have some sort of um hopes of building some pretty big businesses then yeah, hopefully one of my side hustles will take off one of these days because I guess that's my dream, but my ambition is just so my future family doesn't have to worry about anything, if something were to happen or to come up. So that's that's just success in itself as well, supporting the people you care about. And then you can mm -hmm. support the world if you're lucky. So there you go. Yeah. That's, that's very good. So you said you've got a few side hustles. Care to share on any of those, what, what they are? Uh, so obviously one of them is YouTube, but, um, not in the monetization realm yet. Um, also been trying to do some affiliate marketing as well. Mm -hmm. Um, just have a website, but I don't have any ads on it. Um, also just trying to sell some stuff as well. So starting small. Starting small, going big. Yeah, well, with YouTube, as you know, you can go, you can get very big. Just look at me. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You can get You're huge. the biggest person that I know. Well, thank you. 
I've got two more subs than you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, exactly, YouTube, you can go all the way. And I know the monetization threshold is quite different. I thought that was all money on the back at the background then. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, I thought the second no. thing about money, money appears. <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, the monetization thing, it's the 4,000 hour mark on YouTube, which is quite an ask. But I'm yeah. sure it's, um, you know, it is achievable. And that's a good time to mention your channel. So for people who are watching, uh, please check out your channel. I will be leaving a link to that in the description. So please check out Dio's channel. Lots of good stuff there, how to save money, uh, personal growth, etc. So please do check him out. See, there's a plug if you've ever wanted one before. So. <laughs> Very Moving different. on with the questions, let's delve deeper into this. So you, uh, I've watched a good few of your videos and you used to buy sort of typical like expensive consumer items like Yeezys and stuff. You must have been well cool, man. And yeah. you used to buy Yeezys <laughs> and now you've developed a passion for saving money. What's changed? So I would say that I was always like a thrifty person and like oh. I'm not a big spender. And so it really kind of changed in college and also like the influence of social media where it seemed like everyone always wanted to show off all the time and then whenever you the people i would follow on social media they always had nice clothing as well and i guess just the way my brain had the correlation where it's like if you have nice stuff that means that you have a lot of money the funny thing is i didn't buy my yeezys till after college and that's when i sort of discovered that it really doesn't matter um, what you're wearing like some people have like the cheapest clothing and they could have a uh, pretty decent net worth so the funny story with that is I actually bought the Yeezys um, I wore them in my apartment and I was just complimenting myself the whole time that yeah these actually look good on me they feel good and my friend was there as well and I was just really enjoying wearing the Yeezys but then I thought to myself I really don't want people to approach me or talk to me just from the clothes that I'm wearing and these $200 can probably go to something more useful. So I just ended up returning them. But that's the thing, isn't it? You didn't want people just to speak to you because of what you're projecting to the world. You want people to speak to you because of you as a person, not right. what you have. But um, just like this interview, I'm not speaking to you just because of your nice backgrounds. <laughs> yeah, I promise. Um, exactly. That That's true because otherwise it's just sort of hollow and, I suppose it is a bit of an empty way to live if you just buy like material goods to make you feel good about yourself, but mm -hmm. it doesn't really work. And uh, no, that's that's refreshing because I, I, I like your philosophy and I do share it in terms of, you know, saving money where you can, especially with things like clothes and things. I, mm -hmm. I either buy like, because you're in America, it's thrift stores, but in England, they call it mm -hmm. charity shops. That's the equivalent. Okay. And um, I either buy my clothes secondhand from there or I buy um, like cheap new items, like very plain, like T-shirts that are just cheap. And mm -hmm. uh, I always think to myself, like, cause you, as you say, because I watched one of your videos about clothes and people do just get rid of them so quickly. It's such a waste. Yeah, yeah it's waste. they can't even wear them all throughout the entire year. And you probably just have your favorite shirt or jacket that you wear all the time. So. Exactly. I think if I ever spend something that I think is quite a bit of money on a piece of clothing, I'm thinking to myself, you're going to be wearing that for the next 10 years. You've yeah. never liked it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that actually moves us on to the next uh, question quite nicely, because on your channel, when it comes to purchases, you mentioned the 24 hour rule. And I think this would be quite interesting to some people. Would you like to mm -hmm. share what that is? Yeah. So the 24 hour rule is basically stopping people from impulse buying. So for example, myself, I love tech products. So I like to walk into a lot of tech stores and just see the latest gadgets that I can buy. But I always think to myself first, is this a want or a need? And then if it's a want, I ask myself, okay, this thing will probably be here for the next I don't know, rest of the year. So it's not going to go anywhere. So let me just wait 24 hours. So I wait 24 hours. And if it's still on my mind, then you have a higher chance of buying it. But most of the time after 24 hours, you're probably not going to be thinking about buying that product. And it's probably easier to relate in terms of clothing, because I know in a lot of shopping stores, um, there's like lights projected down, um, especially when you go into the fitting room, everything looks much better in store than it does at home. So mm -hmm. I guess your brain really wants you to buy that product. And I'm sure the businesses know this as well. They've, they've obviously done some psychology testing just from the way their buildings are built. And 
I would say nine times out of 10, after you wait 24 hours, you're probably not going to be thinking about that item that you bought. That's a very, you must have saved a fortune with that attitude because I think that would help a lot of people because if you wait that time, it's you're sort of testing your interest of how much you really like what you're trying to buy. Right. And, and I'd say that filter, a lot of people probably wouldn't even make it past there, as you said, if it's sort of impulse. And you really have mm -hmm. to think a lot more carefully about it. I think... I think that's a very good technique. Did you use the 24 hour rule when I asked you for this interview? Did you think, hmm, I need to sit on this? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was definitely a little bit more than, well, it wasn't 24 hours. I don't think so. Cause I think I got your email in the morning and I said, oh yeah, sure. This is a new opportunity. Why not? Yes, I want people to answer within a few minutes. You don't need to think about this, man. This is a great <laughs> opportunity. I, yeah. You're straight in there. No, <laughs> but that's great. That is a very interesting concept. I think you could even push it out further. You could do the 48 hour rule. You could really test your interest. Probably the more expensive it is, the longer you should think about it maybe. Yeah, so like cars, houses, you should probably definitely wait longer than 24 hours because that's a very big difference. Yeah. <laughs> that's true because you still be like, I like it, I like it, I like it. I still like it. Next week, yeah. still like it. <laughs> but maybe a month you might i have found that actually if i've hold, held off from buying something and it's been like over a month sometimes you just get over it yeah exactly save a fortune see people follow dio you're going to save a fortune it's <laughs> crazy you know so right that actually does leave us in uh lead us into the next question next question mm -hmm. which is um why do you think people hate to live within their means so much? And what is it that stops them from doing so? So I would say that, first of all, I like to tie a lot of things to social media, especially with the younger generation. And I think when people hear the phrase living within their means, it correlates to not having fun, which I don't think is true. And also with the news, at least personally for me, whenever I look at the news, it's always like a negative outlook on the world. And then social media, everyone's like agreeing that, yeah, the world is going, getting bad. You can obviously see it all the time. And it just makes you have like this negative outlook on life. And it's also the fear of missing out as well on social media. You always see people having fun all the time. And when, personally, when I think of living within the means, it means that you can't have fun. But what I want people to understand is that you should just pay yourself first and then you can have fun, but not the other way around. Well, that's true. It's just so common. Now. It's interesting what you say about social media and that. That is one big negative of social media, making people sort of feel, as you said, like they're missing out and they're a bit inadequate. So uh, actually, that's a good opportunity. If you want to follow somebody on social media who doesn't have any fun, follow me. <laughs> 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 I'll be sure to follow you and refer you to my friends. <laughs> Thank you. That will help your mindset. But but that is true. I think with living within your means, as you said, it sort of means to immediately, it immediately means to people have less, less fun, less stuff to do. But mm -hmm. if people were to truly sort of accept their current level, no matter how sort of low it is and painful, then that's how they can truly do something about it. If you can say, like, I can only afford this phone, then you but you own it. It will motivate you if you feel dissatisfied about it. So mm -hmm. I think people just have to accept their level, no matter how low it is, and be motivated to do something about it. Right. I think that's also a really good way of thinking about it as well, because whatever you buy, it's not going to be the thing you're going to have forever. So, like, for example, when you buy a house, it's not going to be your first house forever. You're going to always try to be working towards something better. Mm -hmm. So, like, your phone, obviously, it's not going to be the phone you're going to have forever. So if you just work a little bit harder, pay yourself first. Over the course of a year, after you have that saved up money, you can go and buy a better phone that you wanted from the beginning. Exactly. And I think I also I was thinking about this question. I know it's your question for you, but I was trying to answer it myself, actually, and, and think that I think the difference between people who end up being interested in saving money and those who aren't are normally people who are a bit sort of entrepreneurial anyway, because normally if you're trying to save money, you're trying to sort of make way for something for like a bigger side hustle or something. Mm. But for those who aren't really interested in saving money, they're sort of just like full consumers and they're not really trying to build something big. That's what I, that's my theory. I don't know. It's a very, it's a very big topic. It's, there's a lot it that to be said. Topic. That's why I came to you. You are the, the guru, man. You're the guru <laughs> in the making. I don't know. It's really, I really do think it's the news and social media having a heavy influence on people, just having like a negative outlook. And it's like, you just need to have 
as much fun and spend as much money as you can now. Yeah, you, you, always, you always see it whenever you go on social media. Everyone's always having fun, but you never see people, you know, not having fun on social media. Well, that's, that is true, but it's all just short-term fixes. And as we know, short-term just leads to bad results in the end. The long yeah. term's where it's at. And as a fellow, fellow entrepreneur, you can appreciate that. So, well, that is interesting. I always think, I always say that financial freedom can come a bit cheaper than most people think, because yeah. if you really sort of prioritize the things that really make you happy and just put your money into that, you can cut mm -hmm. out all the other lifestyle expenses to an extent. Right. And I think people would be well, well, way, uh, way happier if they did that. And uh, well, so unfortunately, we're getting near the end of this interview, but I would like you uh, to talk a bit about your YouTube channel. Tell us a bit about that, what you get up to on there. All right. So my YouTube channel, I broke it down into three categories. I know it's not that good for the YouTube algorithm in terms of like finding your niche, but um, primarily one is the tech. I like to talk about tech and make people make better decisions so they don't just buy the most expensive thing just because it's what's being marketed to them. There's all there's other devices that are just as good and affordable. Um, also, personal finance. I like to help my immediate friends when it comes to personal finance, but I decided that on YouTube I can reach more people. Um, mm -hmm. I've already helped a few people on my channel as well. And then the third one is personal growth. Um, I just want to grow as a person, and I kind of like you said in the beginning, document my journey along the way. Um, also using this to be a little bit more self-confident in my day-to-day -day life and i can already see the results even though it's been about a month and yeah just showing that everyone can start from somewhere and hopefully lead to a successful life well that's good it's like what you said in your first video that you made that you want to document this because when you are a big success you can look back at that first video and think look how far i've come and that's going to be great so actually i've got some competition you're documenting your journey to success and you're helping people out thank you for stealing my audience <laughs> <laughs> we're competitors now yeah we are exactly but um and i wouldn't worry about i know they all say on youtube oh find your niche find your niche i don't know mm -hmm. i think with you and i who are trying to do big things i don't i think a niche is sort of saying i want a small audience let's okay, go big yeah exactly <laughs> don't Reach worry as many about people it. as you can exactly i think so with your big message you know personal growth is the world tech a lot of people are interested in and you've got a really good edge with tech there that it isn't just like the most popular five-star product it's like the alternative that is as good so that's super yeah. smart and and on the finance tips you've got the potential to have an enormous niche that really isn't a niche so i think in your case uh, coming from a youtube expert um <laughs> i wouldn't worry about the niche i would uh Go, go aggressive. Try and have the whole pie, man. The whole pie. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that might be rubbish advice, but <laughs> that's my theory. Well, I think it's good advice. So everybody who is watching this, you've now heard about Dio's channel. And it is a very good channel. So please go on, go and head over there and subscribe and do all those lovely things. And I just want to say thank you so much for taking part in this interview. Is there any sort of last thing you want to say? Or? If you have social media, don't always think that you're missing out on the fun. You can have fun for the rest of your life. Life is all about experiences and just enjoy life, whatever comes to you. We'll leave on that. Solid advice. Think long, long, think long term. Thank you so much. It's been great.